He's in a coma. I will fight Christmas there, and I will torch the place. I'm gonna make sure this baby never ever meets anyone like Charlie Manx. <laughs> When we come back in season two, we discover pretty quickly that eight years have gone by. Vic was pregnant at the end of season one, and now she has an eight-year-old child. Vic has settled down to raise her family with Lou, and she hasn't really been able to leave things behind. Who's Charlie Makes? What did you just say? Though she vanquished him at the end of season one, he stayed with her. Cause visions? Well, I'm fine. We spent a lot of time last season establishing the world and spending time with the characters, which I loved. This season, it's a bit more like pedal to the metal. We go straight into the action. Straight into the chaos of Vic pursuing Charlie Manx. I have a knife now. All right, I'm gonna find him, Lou. I'm gonna find him, I'm gonna kill him once and for all. Vic, Vic, listen to me. When Vic realizes that her family is being threatened, she has this concept that she sort of has to be a solo rider. She has to go on a suicide mission. Season two becomes much more personal for Vic and Manx. Their conflict is much more rooted in what each one of those characters is trying to either achieve or outrun. In season two, we also get to explore a lot of different eras. Manx is 135 years old, so he's, he's lived a lot, and we get to go actually see some of that life before he became such a kind of withered husk of a person. I tell you, Manx, there's something off about you. Charlie Manx is immortal, and I don't think he thought that he could die. That is important, mostly for him and for Millie, because it has an effect on Christmas Land. And Millie Manx realizes that if something happens to her father, Christmas Land perhaps will not go on without him. If her father's in mortal danger, so is she. What's happening? Millie Manx is a very big character this season. It's more focused on where she came from and what she's going to do when she learns about her past. It's just like you promised. You replied to my post at this Rolls Royce Wraith was for sale. Eight years is a long time, so I think Bing has had time to get more experience, certainly. He's had eight years to think about the mission. Manx is a master manipulator, so Bing very much believes in Manx, but still there are certain doubts that have started to sprout. Charlie Manx isn't dead. Vic, let it go. This is your happy ending. Looking forward, it's sort of like a crossroad season, I think, for Maggie. All of her plot and all of her arc is completely dependent on whether or not she's willing to go back to this old world, even though it wreaks so much havoc. I'm sorry. Like anything in life, everything comes with a gift and a shadow, and Charlie Manx, in Vic's mind, has become the ultimate shadow, a villain, and that's all she sees in him. But people have to either rise to the occasion or let it topple you. There are a lot of bad people in the world, right? And Charlie Manx is one of them. There is a lot more dimension to who these people are and what they're fighting for and why they're fighting for it this year that I think audiences will really be able to relate to. Is the wraith dead? 